Hello everyone, uh, Kay Kim here. Today's August 18, 2017, Friday. Uh, it's uh, midday as I putting this video together. Welcome to the market update. Again, my name is Kay Kim with Kay Kim with the Traders Club. Hope you had a good week trading this week. Uh, we did see some shakeout uh, throughout the equities. Uh, today we're gonna do something a little bit different for you guys today. This is actually what I did for my members. Uh, just earlier, uh, basically, I went through every single indices and all of my positions looking at the weekly chart. When market's shaking big, just everybody starts to panic, everybody starts to freak out, and uh, just there's always somebody somewhere, you know, calling the market is going to crash. There's always somebody somewhere overlaying, you know, 1987, 1929, you know, 2000, 2008 chart. Together, all oh, the crashes are gonna happen. Oh, it's gonna come and it's gonna do that. <laughs> it happens every single pullback, and I have I always do the same speech every pullback. You guys remember? I mean, I think a lot of you guys who listen to me, I think I said the same thing here. Uh, I said the same thing here. I said the same thing here. Uh, when things were really, really looking bad here and here. Uh, we talked about how the market has cultivated new high here, right? We're resuming uptrend. We got higher lows here, and then nobody wanted to hear it, right? Nobody wants to hear, but everybody wants to hear the gloom and doom, and the whole thing is gonna crash. And same people were calling for a crash here, and calling for a crash there after S and P 500, the ETF really 180 to we made 60 points move, and still. <laughs> It baffles me on every little droopy, measly, just this, 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 just pullback. Everybody loses their mind. It baffles me that these guys shouldn't be trading. And obviously, I guess for their defense, it's maybe because they they like to uh, get there, get quick. You know quick move and 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 you know do you really think shorts are making money do you really think bears are making money no do you really think any bears are shorting it right at the top covering it right at the bottom and they did have attempt one attempt two attempt three attempt four no it's more like this let me tell you how that happened Oh, sure, 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 uh, sure, adding more, adding more, adding more, adding more, adding more. Can't do it anymore, close it out. And then when this actually, though, actually opportunity comes back for them to possibly short, they're scared. They're scared because they lost money. So what did they do? They may be short here, and then they cover. They cover. They try to short again, they cover. And then when this happened, maybe all oh, gonna short again, and then they cover. Oh, they get short here finally, and then they make this move. You know what they do? They shout. Top of their lungs. Yes, I made money, right? Fail to mention the last 20 times they try to short that went miserably, that went disastrous. So I don't understand. The people, I don't understand why they want to short the bull market when there's more money to be made to the upside. But anyway, let's. Uh, I, I make I make same speech on every pullback. I always make fun of the shorts on every pullback. I just I'll stop it. Okay, I won't do it anymore. Anyway, um, look at the big picture here. When we look at a big picture, it always gives us perspective, right? We had a you know about 26% correction there, 15% correction there. This was 2011. This is 2015, 2016. Got up here 50 MA, boom, boom, right? One, two, right? Got up here 50 MA, da da. That's one, two. That's the election. That's the uh, Brexit. And then uh, it kind of got into next gear. You can see that we got into next gear here. We got into next gear here. This was Jan. This was back in November. This was a Trump rally. And then we started what happened back in 2013 June. We started really respecting that 20 MA, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20. 20. I think this was an Ebola or something like that, some shenanigan like that. Redone it, but got back 20. And then this thing rallied for another about two years or so. That's where we're here. That's where we're here, right here. 20, 20, and 20. 
That's what we're here. We're an uptrend. Do I know that this thing is going to come down to 50? No, I don't know. All I know is we're on an uptrend. And when this thing starts to really respect that 20, it does respect for a while before it actually comes down back down to 50, which is 232. So I give benefit of the doubt to the buyers in the intermediate term. The weekly 20 MA is holding as of today and it's to be holding there, right? And I wouldn't be so caught up with this slightly. Sometimes what it's gonna do is it gets slightly below it, like something like maybe somewhere like something like this right here. You see that long wig, you know, intraday gets below it and it just gets right back up. Volatility, guys. Volatility is what's gonna find or what is going to supply or create new fresh supply for the market to move. Without volatility, it cannot move. Do you know why from November to March had a very, very strong move? It was that volatility. It was that fear. It was that shakeout. Do you know why from June to uh, prior to the election we had this kind of move? It was that Brexit fear. Right? Market moves on fear. Market moves on shakeout. Market needs new fresh supply. We, they, the big boys need retail traders dump their shares so they can load up. We're in an uptrend. And I stick with that way. Nobody knows when it's going to break. But it is a difficult thing to try to call top. Let's go to Russell 2000. We're going to be looking at Spider, Russell, Q's. Uh, financial sector XLF I also want to look at a retail sector today energy sector and Treasury bond and I believe um, I think like beaten down stocks or beaten down sectors like small caps Russell 2000 that hasn't moved anywhere so for eight months we got energy sector has been coming down a lot and retail sector also that has been being down. I believe those beaten down stocks are gonna start to find some traction towards the end of this year next year I think the money is gonna rotate to those uh, sectors so I'm gonna talk about it a little bit Russell 2000 everybody's talking about how the daily chart uh, you know it broke the major low right when you go to weekly we're still in the consolidation see that we're still in a consolidation this is the IWM weekly right you got a 50 weekly 50 MA we gone slightly below it what happened what did I just say earlier shakeout is a catalyst for a move you get a big gap up right here and you see that's long Mauer bulls of candle this was a lot of fear was looming in the small caps also right But if you understand, let's say you didn't watch any of the news. You just understood the chart pattern. We got the high, you got the high high. What does that mean? We got the high and the higher high. We're, we're cultivating, establishing uptrend. We got the low. Looks like this like inverted head and shoulder of some kind, right? We got that Brexit panning when it came down. We cultivated a higher high. We come down to where? 50 and 100. We cultivated another high. Are we in an uptrend? Yes. We're just developing an uptrend actually on the Russell 2000. I mean, look at this. This is back in 2011, 2012 correction. We got the high, we got the high. We got the low, we got the low. And then 100 SMA boom, 100 SMA boom. And then this thing get into where? A trend. So you can see what after a correction, when you start to establish an uptrend, it doesn't just go boom, crash again. No. So after this kind of correction, after this kind of cultivation uptrend, do you think it's going to go down and then also crash again? I mean, anything is possible, obviously, in the market. We're talking probability here. Go back and study every single chart patterns after a pretty steep crash like we saw in Russell 2000. How much a crash was that? 27% correction. So small caps did see much steeper correction versus a uh, spider when you had 15%, right? So after this kind of steep correction, we have cultivated uptrend. Do you think this thing is ready for 90? No. This is something that um, 
my moderator, moderator, he put this together, and then we're just talking about it. Uh, this is this is daily chart, and uh, this is how the market moves. Market never makes it easy. Sometimes they do. Sometimes it does. Sometimes you know we gotta cancel a day consolidation. We break out, retest the uh, old resistance, new support, and then boom, just easy smooth transaction, right? But sometimes it makes life hard where this thing just plunges, makes new low. We also talked about the weekly, it has a made new low. We're actually still in a consolidation phase. But let's look at some example here. This is uh, this is actually Q's. I don't know what year it was, 2013 or something like that. Oh, it makes new low before going higher. We got this example. I forgot what this one was. Uh, we got consolidation here, makes a new low, fizz it around. We see that kind of move. Uh, this is example three. This is a win actually. We got we got little traps up here, traps down here. This this is a market is designed for this kind of traps, right? Uh, and then and then finally gets up. This is uh, another. I think this I forgot what this was. Uh, you got right there, trapped there, got up. Looked like that was fake. I'm <laughs> fake. Both people out and then got up. I think example five looks uh, most lot like Russell 2000 today because this was in an uptrend. We started getting into this consolidation. You got to understand what consolidation is and what topping pattern is to distinguish that, right? So we got the uptrend, got it up here, and then we start to really fizzle, and then bottom fell out. So they thought, right? Bottom fell out. So they thought. Bottom fell out. So they thought. Bottom fell out. So they thought. Bottom fell out, so they thought bottom fell out, and then before that move. Interesting. Um, let's go back here. So looking at the Russell 2000 on the weekly chart, you can see that uh, we're still in a consolidation phase, the rising channel. And uh, after a correctional move and cultivation of an option, this is actually a very, very constructive move. Whereas everybody else thinking, oh man, smoke caps are in trouble, the whole market is in trouble, the whole market is gonna go to nothing. They said the same thing in 2016, right here. Right? 50 MA acting as support, it acted as strong support back in 2016, October. We're just right near that. Right? Let's go to Q's. Oh man, Q's holding up above 20 MA. I mean, uh, you know, look at this here. You got up, and boom, 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 boom. You said 20 MA hold on this weekly. We got slightly below it, but remember what I just said earlier. A shakeout, shake and bake is the catalyst. Boom. Shakeout, boom. So it makes sense to, to, to kind of look at these levels and then look for opportunity and then when it rips start to move higher start to close your positions out right rather than trying to oh i'm going to show it here oh i'm going to show it there oh i'm going to show it there oh, i'm going to show it there oh i can't do it anymore i close it out and then when it starts to start to pull back oh i'm going to add more and then oh i gotta close it out see what i'm saying this is 20 ma 20 ma is holding last time 20 hold the hold ma hold for a while and not sometimes it goes slightly below it or something like that kind of fake everybody out but i'll tell you if this thing comes down or anywhere below this level man that will be an opportunity to buy not to shore okay uh so we got we looked at spider we got the russell i also wanted to kind of talk a lot talk about this again this target i talked about this last week um what I want to talk about is, I I don't know if I mentioned it last week. This is a back in uh, 2000, uh, late 2013. What happened was actually, it did this. You see that? The trend line actually broke, right? You see that? You see this? Trend line, trend line, trend line. We broke below it. Okay, I adjusted this rising channel support. Watch. No, no, the trend line comes from here. It's a perfect trend line. Support, support, support. We broke slightly below it. Remember what I said? Shakeout is the catalyst, and we saw that move. 
Well, today, actually, let me go. Let me go daily. Be interesting. Oops. Huh. Interesting there. Trend nine, support, 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 breaks. Okay. I don't know if it's gonna come down a little lower or it's gonna go higher from this point on. Like I said, shakeout is a catalyst. Market needs new fresh supply. If it does come down, I think like uh, 240, retag that 100 SMA. Oh, I think that's a definitely that definitely a level uh, to probably start thinking about uh, looking for some opportunity there. Actually, let's go back. So I'm gonna let's go to financial sector, and then we'll look at energy, and then uh, retail, and they'll call it a night. Financial sector just holding up 20 there. 20 hasn't been really acting as strong support. We close below it we kind of trade it all around it i think the last time tony ma did act as support on xlf was this day right here right there right so we're just right at it we're doing a little bit of high wave a uh, spinning top candle there this week but it looks like that's kind of what it does we get uh we fizzle and the 20 starts to act as support and he kind of trades all around it but you can see trend goes up the only way to truly trade XLF effectively is to buy these dips and then when it rips start to close up buy it close it up buy it close it up and just ride it for years all right let's go to XLE XLE has been beaten down a lot okay um, this thing got up and this thing pretty much tanked. But same thing happened here. This thing got up. This thing tanked. What did I just say today? Volatility, the shakeout is the catalyst. Market needs a new fresh of supply. You want to, do you want to, do you wanna, do you wanna able to ride this big, bullish move I'll tell you I'll tell you who are the traders who are riding this bullish move not day traders for sure not swing traders for sure not even just a buy and hold passive I'm gonna buy in a whole 20 years type of investor no active investors and position traders active investors what they will do is once they start to pull back and, and position traders like myself, I'll start to accumulate positions in that vicinity. I mean, I could buy it up here, it could come down, I'll hold through it. I have a big leniency and then I hold. Because I went, I held these shenanigans when the market starts to rip like this, I'll hold through it, okay? I hold through that move. Not be like, oh yeah, I got up, oh, it's a resistance, I'm gonna, oh yeah, it's a, oh, there's, a, oh, it's a, I, I, I don't wanna lose my gain, it's like, well, you don't know when to hold, you gotta know when to go long, you don't know where your stop is or your target is and all of that. I mean, if I just go back to that Russell chart, you know whose people are riding this, who ride this whole big thing right here, these big moves? You know who's really riding it all the way, really? Most of it? It's not the people who uh, went long right at the bottom or somewhere right here. They're gonna get, they're gonna hold for a couple days and close it out. It's the people who start to accumulate somewhere here, start to accumulate somewhere here, start to accumulate somewhere about here, start to accumulate somewhere about here, start to accumulate somewhere up here. Because it's impossible when the market is channeling like this and consolidate, it's impossible to pinpoint a perfect level because you know, many times you're trying to uh, go for uh, the breakout play and just disastrous, right? It's better to kind of maybe buy it in that vicinity or buying the dip and hold and then when it breaks out, you ride it. People who've been patient are the one who's benefiting, reaping, the profit, harvesting what they've sowed. Not some people calling a crash, a doomsday, or overly reacting. Oh, the small caps, man, is, oh yeah, your faith is dependent on it. What faith? Oh, yeah, you know, 
the Russell 2000 is weak and the whole thing is in a collapse and and man the bottom is falling on Russell 2000 how many times you see bottom falling up okay isn't it aren't you worried I mean it's a market it's it's market is never pretty when was the last time you just you're you're uh, everything just worked perfectly like you went long and it's just per I mean there's times you know yeah it, it does happen but more often than not your trade is never pretty it's never pretty and people who's always looking for their pretty setups Trust me on this. Those pretty setup, these some guys are tweeting on. Oh, look at my setup. Oh, look at this. <laughs> Before that setup actually worked out, they are if if the one one or two setup worked out, there are like ten setups that was just disastrous. The breakout plays. Do you really want to play a breakout plays? Do you really want to play this short plays? Oh, that's a short. 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 No. Market doesn't play that way. Just because you know how to draw a couple lines, you think you're a technical analysis master? No. Market will brutally punish you thinking that you're a technical analysis master just because you know how to draw a few trend lines, right? Not only do you have to understand trend lines, you have to understand the big picture aspect. You have to understand what kind of sentiment we're in. Now, are we in a consolidation phase or are we in a topping pattern? Are we in an uptrend in a primary term? Or are we in a downtrend? Are we in an intermediate term uptrend? You know what I'm saying? And I'm not here. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying that I know everything. I'm the master at all. You must. That's not what I'm saying. I I don't presume to know everything. I I guess I'm trying to help in a way that. It's never pretty. Market is the, is is never easy. It's never uh n nothing is gonna be so smooth. And some people tell you, oh, it's just it's just price and volume. That's all you need. Really, price and volume is all you need? No, it takes more than that. I'm telling you right now, it's not just price and volume. Um, when when shakes, you look for opportunity. When shakes. You look for opportunity, right? Energy sector, retail sector, uh, small caps. Those are the sectors that has been beaten down. I will look for setups on these. XRT. This is a weekly chart. What do we see here? Oh, yes. Head and shoulder formation, huh? I mean, this thing looks like... And I have heard somebody say on Stock Twist that there's going to be bankruptcy happening everywhere. Huh. Interesting. There's going to be a bankruptcy happening every year. Well, if that was the case, then, uh, well, banks definitely after how many people said after this kind of move, banks is coming back down to 20. How many, raise your hands. How many people heard that? Me, uh, minimum 20. How many people heard that? Me, right? Oh, wow. So. Every time there's head and shoulder formation, we would uh, start to, you know, oh, let's look, let's look at some more evidences here, I think. Right here. Oh my gosh, man, look at this. Look at that thing. Look at this thing. It's massive. I mean, last time the market crashed, from 2008 to 2009, when it did this, that was exactly the pattern, right? I mean, this was what? Just exactly like about a one year of consult topping pattern. Seven, yeah, about a one year, right? Oh, my exact same thing happening here. Look at that. I heard people saying that spider's going to 60. Not kidding you. I was trading at the time. People are going to 60. I was actually scared. I was scared that it might go to 60. What did I just say? The shakeout is the catalyst, right? Shakeout is the catalyst. Am I saying that um, it's for sure thing that you know retail sector is just gonna do something like that and just go? That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that so many people are so quick to, you know, 
Be fearful of everything. Go back and see what I was saying when this was happening. Oh my gosh, this thing is a monster. But we need a confirmation, a full confirmation. We never had a confirmation, remember? There were other signals that I was looking at, not just spider. There are other signals that I was looking at of why I was confident the market wasn't going to crash. This is the reason why back in uh, early 2016, I came up with the uh, videos, five reasons uh, why, uh, five biggest reasons why market crashed not. Uh, stocks historical breakout, Dow's historical breakout, uh, uh, prepare for a new secular bull market cycle. I talked about the five-year bull run is coming. I, I did a video and also did a video, uh, the extinction of the bears back in early 2016 that's a bet that's very massive topping pattern it ha it was the caliber it had enough enough look that it could potentially bring it down it, it did but it never confirmed what did I just say a shakeout is a catalyst market needs new fresh of supply look at where we're at this was it Brexit, boom. Uh, election, boom. You know what I realize? People who are doing the worst in the market is are the, the prop usually the loudest, right? They 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 call a one day a move. They 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 have to make sure the whole, everybody must know. Yeah, remember I told you so. I I called it. I nailed it. I warned you with the you know, exclamation points. Usually the loudest ones are the ones who are horribly doing bad. They they need some approval from you. They're just overly excited just because because they're they're not doing well. They they rarely get right, so they have to celebrate just a you know just a few days of a uh, move. Where where was I? XRT right. So obviously it's a vulnerable look. I, I'm not I'm not disputing that fact. I'm not. Disputing the fact that it is a vulnerable look, but until I see a full confirmation, meaning where if this thing starts to come down, and I have no position in XRT right now, so I mean I'm just watching. But if unless we start to see something like that, like lower low and lower high, there's a chance. And also you gotta make sure there has to be a full confirmation. You can't you can't look at it and say, well, we slightly get below it and then get up, because there could be a mother of all bear trap. But I don't know. I just just like how I thought there wasn't gonna be. Uh, I, I I just just how I called that the financial sector when we saw that topping pattern, the huge head and shoulder pattern. I called it and said, um, you can go back and check that I call it a bluff. We need to hold that twenty two ninety seven. I call this a bluff. I believe I thought that this was a scare tactic. This is the reason why I started accumulating banks here and start buying, accumulating in that position. I'm still holding full positions on it, by the way. I'm still holding it. I didn't close any of it just because we saw a little pullback, which I do believe that it's gonna continue higher, but it's gonna have up and downs. And I believe XRT would do something similar, but for me to be, I don't have any position. I don't wanna buy any dips because this is much more massive here. What I want to see is probably this thing starts to get above 44.32. But you know what? There's going to be more shenanigans happening. And then starts to kind of cultivate higher lows and higher highs. And then on these pullbacks, maybe I'm going to thinking about buying it. So I'm going to be kind of watching it here. One last one. TLT, I'll let you guys go. TLT, looking good here. Weekly chart. Let's actually go to weekly chart. That's kind of what we've been doing all day. So weekly chart, obviously, we're on an uptrend here. Higher lows, higher highs. Uh, you know what's interesting to note that... Uh, we are trading, you know, it's, it's, it's right there, it's kind of a, it's a neckline, we got a double bottom, and neckline gets retested, uh, same thing happening kind of recently right there, we got neckline, neckline, retest, bubble bottom, uptrend support, uptrend support, kind of like neckline right there, we got the little bit of double bottom, we got a neckline there, so that's a, that's a good look, looks like we're gonna get to about one, uh, possibly, you know, 145, 150 as, as long. I mean, it's not going to go straight up. It's going to have its up and downs, but it looks good there. Have a wonderful weekend. Good luck trading next week.